Hello, this is a video on how to uh, script uh, with filtering enabled on Roblox uh, by using remote events and remote functions. Uh, so what is the purpose of filtering enabled? Uh, well, filtering enabled is used to prevent people from hacking your game. Uh, let me give you an example right now. So let's imagine I'm a hacker and I'm in a game. Uh, what, uh, what could be done by a hacker is a hacker could run some code on their machine using a third party program uh, to do something malicious to the game so for example they could remove uh, everything in the map okay if you look in the top right corner of the screen I've just set up a mock command bar to show um, what they could potentially do if it was turned off so I could say game uh, dot workspace uh, and I could clear all children okay and that will wipe out the map for all players in the game and so someone would have just hacked the game uh, and has just uh, got rid of all the fun okay um, but what filtering enabled does is instead of deleting it for all players uh, if we go back in again and we run the same code now uh, if filtering enabled is now turned on if a hacker decides to uh, try and hack the game and deletes the base plate uh, well, well deletes everything in the game in the workspace it will only delete for them okay if we go into the server all right and this will this is what it will look like for everyone else so for this player the the world is gone but for everyone else in the game and on the server everything is perfectly fine now this is because um filter enabled uh, whenever a player tries to alter something in the in the game say in the workspace or tries to uh, delete something or change something or a property of something uh, the server will block any requests so anything that a player tries to do to change the game will be blocked by the server and only they will see uh, whatever they try to change so in this case they try to de delete everything uh, and only they see uh, that only they see the result and the game is unchanged so filtering enabled it helps to protect everyone else in the game um, and it means that uh, People that hack the game are only hacking themselves and ruining the fun for themselves. So that is a quick um, explanation of filtering enabled. But filtering enabled can create some problems. Okay, so because filtering enabled basically means that um, a client, basically, uh, by the way, a client is a player in the game, and the server is a massive computer which is owned by Roblox, and it runs all of the scripts and, and runs the game and clients connect to that server when they join a game um, filtering enabled because it blocks any players from changing anything in the game it means it breaks our local scripts okay I've got a script here uh, in a GUI a local script and when this text button is clicked it will lift this barrier which is in the workspace okay now this barrier or the parking gate is stored in the workspace which is on the server okay but our lift barrier GUI uh, and this text button the local script which um, runs the code this code is running in the local script so it's running locally on my computer so it means that my client whenever this button is clicked is going to try and make a change on the server for all of the other players by trying to lift the gate so if we go and try this out and try and lift the gate you can see when I click the lift uh, button it says clicked so it's printed clicked so we know that the uh, event has fired and, and the uh, and the button script is working fine but you can see the uh, the barrier isn't lifting and that's because the server has seen that we're trying to raise the bar which is in the workspace but because filtering enabled is turned on and it's well it's not turned on here but uh, I assure you it is forced by Roblox um, that's just how Roblox games work nowadays because filtering enabled the server has blocked us from making any changes to the uh, to the gate or to to the rest of the game so filtering enabled it creates a problem uh, it stops the hackers which is good but it also breaks um, a lot of scripts and especially old scripts in Roblox games um, but there's a way to fix it uh, and that is remote events so remote events 
uh, we set them up beforehand before we you know we make our games live and um, we set them up in studio and what they do is when we click the button we can fire our remote event it's kind of like a man in the middle okay like a messenger and when we click the button we can fire our remote event and the remote event is stored in replicated storage okay so i'm just going to insert a remote event here we store the remote event in replicated storage because uh, replicated storage it can be accessed it can be viewed by both the server and any clients okay so uh, we can see the remote event on on our um, local GUI here, which is on our client. We can see it and we can fire that remote event. But also, um, once we fired it, we can pick up that uh, that remote event request on the server. And as I said, the server has control over everything in the game. So the server has the power to be able to lift the barrier. Okay, because uh, as I said. Uh, a client if a client tries to change it they get blocked in case they're doing something that's malicious uh, and we don't want them to hack the game so only the server which is owned by roblox and runs all of our scripts which we make in roblox studio can uh, can change the game world but if we have a remote event and we fire and we um, fire it from the uh, client which is locally on our computer we can pick it up on the server and then whenever we get that request from a client we can run predefined code, which we've already written uh, in server scripts. So in our server script here, in server script service, we can set up an event listener, which is going to basically wait until our remote event has been fired. And once we have fired our remote event, we will uh, pick it up, okay, on the server script, and then we will run code immediately after it's been picked up to lift the barrier okay so what we'll do is we'll head into our local script here and instead of trying to alter the parking gate we're just going to copy this code for now so let's just cut it out of this script and instead we'll say game dot replicated storage where our remote event is stored dot remote event and now to fire this remote event so fire basically means send a signal and, and, and trigger it so that we can pick it up on the server side uh, we're going to say fire server so a colon and then fire server okay now what this is going to do it's going to fire that remote event off and now that we've fired it we can set up our event listener so the listener uh, you should be pretty good with events by now because this is quite uh, this is intermediate advanced scripting so an event listener will just listen out for, for until the, that uh, remote event's been called. So we can say game dot replicated storage dot remote event dot. Now it's called dot on server event. Okay. So whenever you're firing something from the client and you want to pick it up on the server, you use on server event. If it's the other way around and you're firing something from the server because you want to change something in the player GUI, um, which you can't view on the server uh, then you have to use on client event but we're going to be dealing with on server event for now we'll say colon connect function uh, and we'll have our arguments here as well which get passed from the client to the server so uh, when we fire this from from a client the server will know which player triggered this remote event okay it's automatically passed as an argument so we have a argument of the player that fired it okay so always include player as your first argument because it's automatically sent over and if you're going to have any other arguments such as i don't know uh one two three okay you always when you're doing your event listener you have to put the player argument first then you'll have your one two and three arguments uh, which come after it if you need it so we'll just get rid of those um and you don't need to put player in the uh, brackets here for, for fire server but uh, in our event listener, we can now just paste the code, which will lift the barrier. I'm going to copy this uh, variable as well, which we had. And now, when that remote event has been triggered, uh, we can just we'll print as well, uh, remote event picked up on the server, and uh, it will lift the gate like this. Okay, so what we've done, just to recap, is we have, uh, we have created an event 
in the local script in this GUI because the local script is running on our computer on our clients once it's been clicked we're going to fire a remote event uh, which will basically send a signal to the server and it will trigger some code which we've already written uh, and we've got our event listener here which when the event has been fired we pick it up and we will run any code inside of here okay and again the remote event it's in replicated storage because you can see it from the client uh, and you can also see it on the server okay but if a client tries to change anything in replicated storage again like the workspace the things that they change if they do something malicious it will only change for them and no harm will be done so let's go back and play the game again and we're going to click lift the barrier and there we go you can see uh the blue in the output signifies that uh, it was printed on the client that it was clicked and then it must have fired the remote event and then on the server we picked it up and uh, it obviously ran the code to lift the barrier let's do that again and there we go there it goes up it goes and it's going to wait five seconds and then it's going to come back down again so there we have it uh, a quick little demonstration on filtering enabled and how remote events work uh, in the next video i'll go over how remote functions worked uh, let me know how you think this video went. I think it went quite well. First video in a while, uh, but more coming soon. And I definitely want to do some more filtering enabled videos. So make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are excited for those. Uh, I'll see you uh, next time. Thanks for watching.